So, on the 26th anniversary of the Pokemon series last Sunday, a Pokemon Presents ceremoniously revealed the next mainline titles in the franchise, Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. These new games have already begun their rollouts only a month following the release of Pokemon Legends Arceus and have been confirmed to be releasing this year, likely in November, similar to Pokemon Sword and Shield, as well as Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Many fans, including myself, have had some initial feelings that Gen 9 is approaching rather quickly. However, believe it or not, it has been nearly three years since Generation 8. While some fans are already expressing their concerns for Scarlet and Violet, I think that this reveal and the subsequent trailer have given us more than enough of alluring reasons to be excited about for this upcoming flagship release in the Pokemon franchise. Let's talk about it. First things first, as in every new Pokemon installment, we are going to be in a brand new region. We don't know any specific details on the area, such as its fictional name, quite yet, but what we do know is that it is unequivocally inspired by the real world locations of Spain and Portugal. Many of the structures and landmarks shown off in the reveal trailer mirror those of real locations in Spain. One in particular is the massive castle-like structure with long spiked rooftops and a giant purple Pokeball as a centerpiece. The building, minus the Pokemon branding, is a direct match to the La Saranda Familia Church, a basilia located in Barcelona. Another point of emphasis that leads us to Spain is the trailer's emphasis on oranges and grapes. As it seems that the color theming between Scarlet and Violet will be paired with visual cues of oranges and grapes two fruits that are synonymous with the region. Valencia is the mecca of oranges in Spain, and many of us are already familiar with the importance of grapes in Spain and broader Europe when it comes to wine culture and production. I would like to imagine that the player starts their journey in a quiet village near the coast that draws heavy inspiration from coastal areas in Portugal, then travel into the large and bustling regions of greater Spain. There is also potential for post-game content to be sectioned off to an island location, perhaps one that parallels the IRL destination of the Balearic Islands out west of Spain's mainland. Another given in new Pokemon titles are, well of course, the new Pokemon. And lucky for us, we were even granted a full peek at the starters for Gen 9 in this first look of Scarlet and Violet. Here we have Spirigatito, the grass cat Pokemon, Fucoco, the Fire Croc Pokemon, and Quaxley, the Tidy Duckling Pokemon. The names of these starting mons further support the clear Spanish origins of the game's region, with Fucoco being a blend of the Spanish terms Fuego, which is fire, Crocodile, and perhaps Coco, which is a mythical ghost famous in Spanish lore. Sprigatito also draws from it as well. While sprig simply is just an English word for a small twig or stem, gatito is Spanish for little cat, a fitting description. Although it is not certain what the evolutions of these starters will look like, there are some history that can be made with these Gen 9 starters. As some fans believe that Spirigatito could potentially become the first grass fairy starter if the spirit part of its namesake derives from woodland fairy or sprite origin rather than one from a phantom or a ghost. Subsequently, it could also mean that Fucoco could become the first fire poison or fire steel starter. However, due to its shape somewhat resembling a pepper, there is even a probability that balance gets thrown out the window and fire grass becomes a reality. As for Quaxley, it doesn't have immediate meanings with its name like the other starters. Since it's a duck, it would be obvious to make it water flying. However, Pokemon of that typing is already pretty oversaturated, and it wouldn't really fit the potential typings of the other two so far. If Spirigatito evolves into a Grass Fairy Pokemon, and if Yukoko evolves into a Fire Steel Pokemon, it would be a balanced fit for Quaxley to evolve into a Water Fighting type Pokemon, one of the rarest typings in Pokemon's history, with only three in existence, including the recently added Urshifu from Gen 8. Now, Pokemon and Game Freak tends to steer clear of generally unused type combinations for starters because the novelty could bias the player's choice. So of course, these fan predictions aren't going to be accurate this early, but the type combinations in theory are a near perfect trifecta. 
with fairy not resisting fighting moves being the only thing that doesn't make it work. But it would make the starters also feel new deeper than simply the Pokemon and the designs themselves. One thing to anticipate that Pokemon has practically confirmed themselves is that Gen 9 will have true open world gameplay. While many were disappointed that Pokemon Legends Arceus ended up only having limited amounts of free exploration, it seems the developers are committing to a full-fledged experience based on the early drafts of gameplay synopsis on the official Scarlet and Violet website, stating very encouraging things like, With these new titles, the Pokemon series takes a new evolutionary step, allowing you to explore freely in a richly expressed open world. And, You'll be able to experience the true joy of the Pokemon series, battling against wild Pokemon in order to catch them, now in an open world game that players of any age can enjoy. These are very transparent claims directly from the source on day zero of Violet and Scarlet's pitch to the fanbase, and I'm excited. We could be looking at a traditional Pokemon experience with the exploration experience that many of us fans have envisioned growing up. While I would love for developers to fully jump the shark and remove any linearity in-game past the opening segment, I think it would be extremely refreshing as a player to be able to truly unlock a compelling playing field where every inch of the world can be traversed and interacted with. My only demand is that the environments in-game are even more dynamic than what we have seen so far. Obviously the game is still under construction. But I need the towns to be bustling with people, and the wild areas to be full of Pokemon species interacting with each other. This open world confirmation has the keys to quite literally swing the franchise open and breathe a massive breath of fresh air into it for at least the next decade of titles. A lesser detailed asset to look forward to is what the newest unique gameplay mechanic will be. In recent years, we've had the Gigantamax forms from Galar, the Z-Moves in Alola, and Mega Evolution in Kalos. From key scenes in the reveal trailer for Gen 9, and from a very close analysis in the Japanese logos for both Scarlet and Violet, some fans are speculating that the next big gimmick in the franchise will focus on the fusion of moves or even types. As with the past few generations, the Japanese logo has always hinted at the new gimmick of said game. The new logo has a prominent six-pointed star. As for the trailer, the plaza shown in the town has every Pokemon type represented on the tiles in a circular shape, all within a large starburst shape, similar to that on the Japanese logos. It has been suggested that the new gimmick could be similar in fashion to a Z-Move item and change the type of a Pokemon's move. Fans have also pointed out how Scarlet's logo is infrared and Violet's is ultraviolet meaning that the games are potentially themed around light. Furthermore, in the plaza's art, the Pokeball in the center is rainbow in color, with all the types stemming from it like a spectrum. The constant leads pointing back to a focus on types really zeroes in on fusion or something named around the idea of light and spectrum being the latest shiny new feature that will likely tie into the narrative of the games as well. A broader reason why the reveals of Scarlet and Violet are a cause of commotion is that they add to what has now become an extremely stacked and heavy hitting lineup for 2022. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2, a direct sequel to one of the most acclaimed video games of all time and arguably one of the most anticipated games in the industry is still expected for a late holiday release this year. In less than a month from now, Kirby will finally get his mainline title for the Switch in Kirby and the Forgotten Land, a promising and expansive adventure that many have compared to Super Mario Odyssey in direction. Another blockbuster in Splatoon 3 is scheduled to take the summer. Massive sequels in Xenoblade Chronicles 3 and Bayonetta 3 have also been booked for later this year. That's not forgetting that some long-missed and beloved series are coming back too with both Mario Strikers Battle League and Nintendo Switch Sports on the way in April and June respectively. And all of that is on top of the fact that we just got a big Pokemon release just over a month ago in Pokemon Legends Arceus. Talk about a loaded year. And we entered 2022 off the wave of even more large releases like Metroid Prime and the Diamond and Pearl remakes. So to add Scarlet and Violet, a mainline Pokemon title that has promised to be the most ambitious installment yet to this deadly list, 
no doubt gives 2022 the crown for the biggest year for the Switch since the system launched five years ago in 2017. That being said, those are just a handful of reasons why I think we should be pretty excited for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Personally, I've had my gripes with the series in recent times, but I truly think that this next generation of games has the potential to take the series in the best direction possible. But those are just my thoughts. I want to know what you guys think. How do you feel about the reveal of Gen 9? Are you excited for Scarlet and Violet? Which games are you going to get when it comes out? And what do you want to see most in-game? Let me know in the comments. If you made it this far in the video, I truly appreciate you. If you enjoyed the content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. We're almost at 1,000 subs. And as always, take care, good game, and thank you for watching. Peace.